Paradox, The Kabbalistic Path of Expanding Consciousness, Part 5, The Mystery and Application of Eye Centers. The Zohar uses fables to convey the deepest truths. When the time for creation arrived, God took a certain sapphire stone and cast it into the abyss. That foundation stone is the center point of the universe, the Holy of Holies, concerning which the prophet spoke, one stone, seven eyes. The number seven here is more symbolic than literal, expressing the sum total of perspectives that produce a complete system. For the number seven combines the six directions plus the center point, or soul of the matter. Everything that is partakes of these seven. The eye is our porthole to the world. It defines our visual field, which divides the universe into what we can see and what lies beyond our perception. The world is a big place with lots going on, but most of it happens outside our awareness. These blind spots, which are really vast tracts of reality, make error inevitable. We are trapped inside our perceptual box. Yet there is a way out. If we could fuse the input of all the eyes in the universe, we would see the world, almost at least, from Hashem's perspective. That composite of visual fields would pop us out of our box. Its fusion of vantage points is most akin to the mysterious foundation stone which lies at the center of the universe and has eyes all around. For each soul brings some unique corner of the universe into focus through the circumstances of its life and psyche. No one else sees it quite that way, and that information is critical to the whole. If the content of any eye center were missing, the composite image would be fuzzy and skewed. Take, for example, the portraits of these six men, each one a little quirky in his way. Yet when you add all their noses together and all their eyes together, mouths, etc., you get a composite image that combines the features of all six faces. And a certain grace emerges from the counterbalancing that occurs in the process. Now in that example, we saw the physical features of a small sample of men get fused into a composite one. Yet the Talmud declares that just like every face is different, so every eye center is different. The sum total of eye centers in the universe, when fused in this way, fits the description of our foundation stone, the center point of the universe with eyes all around. Yet this composite of perspectives only works when each eye center is thoroughly, even stubbornly, articulated. For if it remains vague and one's authentic self never emerges, that eye center's place in the whole will be blurred. Yet on the other hand, if I doggedly assert my truth and refuse to compromise at all, even for the sake of peace, well, that is sure to sow conflict and dispute. And that brings us to the paradox of merging and differentiating. The challenge becomes, how do I assert my eye center with its preferences, aversions, biases, and blind spots, and at the same time still make space in my psyche for others to assert different, even contrary truths, and to do all this in a way that is real, yet does not weaken the vehemence of my own position or produce doubt regarding the certainty of my own beliefs? For if I validate my opponent's position, then do I not, by definition, weaken my own? They believe that I am wrong, and by seeing their point, I lose my leverage and lend weight to their claim. And in matters of religion, the dangers multiply, for faith is a precious and fragile thing. By definition, it cannot be proved. So if I consider the arguments against it and validate the folks that mock my beliefs, Perhaps I will flounder and begin to doubt all that cannot logically be proved. My survival instinct keeps me from standing too close to a ledge. My spiritual survival instinct keeps me from considering intellectual positions that deride my beliefs. Because if I would really take them in, they might damage my faith. Not because they are more right, but because they pull the debate into the intellectual realms where they have the upper hand. For ultimately, faith is not defensible by logical proofs. Faith's inner knowing is self-referenced. Logical proofs are outer-referenced, and that produces a tug-of-war. Am I self-referenced enough to resist the taunt that if I cannot prove my faith, then it's clearly a delusion? But on the other hand, Hashem looked into the cosmic Torah and created the world. Everything in the universe derives from there, as below, so above. Just as every sentence in our written Torah is bursting with holy teachings, even the verses spoken by evil men like Paro, Bilam, and Esav, so is this true for the cosmic Torah. Every moment actualizes a new revelation of its wisdom, 
and everyone participates, saint and sinner, believer and scorner alike. We are all revealing truths of the cosmic Torah through the dance that is the mystery of our lives. No eye center could exist if it was not serving this mission, if it did not possess a splinter of truth, its personal sliver of the cosmic Torah. Rav Tzadik says that when we can hear Hashem speaking through even the most disagreeable eye centers, we enter Jerusalem consciousness, the city that is founded on our mythical foundation stone. So how do we do that? How do we hear Hashem speaking through the eye centers around us, including even the most loathsome ones? It seems like there are three options. One, sometimes the actual content of our opponent's opinion must be considered. He or she is expressing a fact that we overlooked and must now admit, if we are genuinely seeking truth, that is. Two, sometimes the other's assertions are just plain false, as far as we can see. Perhaps their data was flawed, or their arguments are biased, or their opinions just do not ring true. But even so, their intentions are good. They are motivated by a Torah value and seek to do the ethical thing. 3. Sometimes there is nothing redeemable about their content or intention. They are thugs through and through, but Hashem brought them into our lives for a reason. They are delivering a providential message which we must decode by finding the most spiritually productive response to the ordeal. Hashem chooses the most fallen souls for that dirty work. They are the bilams and paros of the cosmic Torah. In summary, the foundation stone and center point of the universe has eyes all around, implying that it compiles the input of every eye center in creation. The messianic golden age will be built upon our restored foundation stone. We all must contribute by completing two paradoxical tasks. One, to stubbornly press out the details of our particular eye center, for its information is vital to the project's success. This task requires a stiff neck and rugged individualism. Two, we must contribute to the composite by admitting that as sure as we are of what's good, bad, and evil, it is possible that things look very different from other angles and that those contrary assessments might be as valid as our own. At the very least, there is sure to be redeemable truth in them that can and must be salvaged. This second task requires pliability and self-effacement.